Hello all, and welcome to tonight's beer review, which I am calling the How Unfortunate Beer Review. Um, well, anyways, why is it unfortunate? Well, because I haven't eaten my dinner yet. I've got a nice, hot, fresh, like freshly made margarita pizza over there. And just be, I was going to review this beer, and looking it over, you can tell by here, it's got a lot of condensation on it. Looking at the ingredients, it has lactase in it lactose in it and so I have to go and get you know my dairy digester because I am lactose intolerant and I couldn't find it for like 10 minutes straight as you can see on the ground here this, I literally dumped out one of my bags um, I'm kind of a hoarder of receipts as you can probably tell hoarder of receipts and change it's probably about like twenty dollars worth of like quarters just over there um, trying to find it, and eventually I found it, I left it on my counter. So anyways, without further ado, let's just get straight to this beer here. Now, this is Elysian's Punkachino Coffee Pumpkin Ale. So, you know, it's gotten a little bit warm, but that's okay because coffee ale should be a little bit warm. You know, 60 degrees or so. And this is 6.0 ABV. So, the lightest of the Elysian Halloween box set. It's made with coffee, of course, lactose. Um, and let's just read the label, shall we? Punkachino Coffee Pumpkin Ale. A pumpkin ale with the attitude of a world weary barista, Punkachino packs a short shot of Stumptown coffee in your pint with just a shake of cinnamon and nutmeg. Contains lactose. I have a phone job interview tomorrow. Um, depending on how it goes, I might have to go and change my review schedule. But that's why I really did not want to, uh, you know, do this without having <laughs> some dairy digestive. So, a sort of reddish brown, not too dark though, the light passes through the bottom, with an off-white to beige head, that is about a finger's worth of thickness. Hmm. So, definitely smell that cinnamon and nutmeg, it's up in there. And underneath that, you have a sort of sweet and creamy coffee smell. Almost cappuccino-like, unsurprisingly. Can't really smell any of the malt aspects. Or the hops, for that matter. Maybe just a hint of dark malts but very much dominated by the spice and then the coffee in the nose. On to the palate, shall we? Mm. Silky smooth. Despite the fact that the spice, the nutmeg and the cinnamon dominates in the nose, we actually take some second to third fiddle on the palate. The dark malts in the coffee sort of dominate the palate. So the coffee really emerges in the mids. That's when it's at its most defined. A sort of light-bodied roast bean. And in the front, much more 
dark roasted malts. In the long finish, subtle hop bitterness in the long finish. As well as an undercurrent in the mids to finish. Spice is kind of a top note here. More apparent on the nose, just a subtle sweetness on the palate um, that melts with the sweetness of the lactose. Lactose doesn't really add too much oomph to it, but it just adds to the silky creaminess of the mouthfeel, as well as to probably the sweetness as well, perceived sweetness on the tongue. There's not much pumpkin here. Pumpkin's kind of way on the bottom. It's obviously going to be, being that it's such a subtle flavor. Uh, it would be easily, it's easily overdominated by spices. It's easily overdominated by hops. It's easily over, especially overdominated by coffee and dark malts. It's still there though. It's a ghost in the midst of just a slight hint of gordiness. And of course, it probably also adds to a bit more of oomph on the body. Now, some reviews have found this a little bit on the watery side. I don't. I think it's about right. It might hit a little bit more on the watery side if it's a bit overly cool. I also do wish that there was a little bit wider of a spice range like in the Night Owl. I mean, you can really just tell it's cinnamon and nutmeg in here and it doesn't have all the other spices like allspice and ginger. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, if you like pumpkin spice coffee, you might like this. It's probably more bitter due to the coffee and dark malts and the fact that there isn't actual real cream in here than most pumpkin spice coffees actually are. But it definitely does fit that flavor profile quite well. That roastiness, that um, cinnamon and, and nutmeg spice. Myself, I'm still, I still think the Night Owl is the best so far of the three that I've tried. This one is definitely better than the Imperial Ale, though. Would I seek this out again? Probably not. One, because I'm not too big into coffee in my beers. For one, um, I tend to find that it really, really dominates the palate and the nose quite a bit. And two, you know, um, I don't think this qualifies as a milk stout, even though it's got definitely dark roasted malts in here. But as someone who is, you know, lactose intolerant, I generally don't seek out milk stouts. Uh, if I liked them better, I probably would, but they are kind of a hassle in that I gotta go and pop like a dairy pill or two before consuming one. 
Otherwise, I will not be very comfortable the next morning. Now, if you like coffee stouts, this is definitely, I would say, definitely one to go and check out. Again, coffee beers, not really my cup of tea, but this is a good example of one. As a pumpkin beer, I don't think there's really all that much pumpkin there. It really comes across as a spice beer, you know, <laughs> coffee and spice, really. Honestly, you could go and call this one a pumpkin spice beer in that there's that pumpkin spice in there, but not too much pumpkin. And really, when I drink pumpkin ales, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking really for that presence of pumpkin. So, Punkachino Coffee Pumpkin Ale. If you like coffee stouts, if you like milk stouts, if you like pumpkin spice coffee, give this one a shot. If you're like me, looking for that et in Arcadia ego of pumpkin beers, well, this is not it, but it's good for what it is. And that, folks, is your beer review for tonight. Cheers.